Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about how we can interpret the different types of errors that we have seen in the previous videos, the ME, MASE and all. So I will show you a simple example uh, within the Excel so that you can better understand and then you know you can form your understanding whenever the information is coming in the R you can relate to this. And second thing is uh, talk a little bit about the AIC uh, at a very high level what uh, AIC is and uh, how it is useful in in terms of evaluating the time series models. So for that first of all let's go to the AIC the Akai information criteria and what it helps is uh, it basically takes uh, you know does the evaluation of multiple models based on the value it is providing for one model so let's say if the value for one model is uh, uh, 551 and for another model is uh, 669 and uh, for third model is is 450 then whom so, so if the lowest value is coming as 450 we will going to choose that one because uh, as per its principle the less is the AIC the better will be the model so that's the high level understanding about what AIC is. Apart from that, sometimes people also use BIC, but uh, I'm not uh, explaining that uh, since it is a little bit out of the scope and has a different approach because it's a Bayesian kind of information, Bayesian information uh, component. So, so let's see the AIC here uh, in this RAIN model. So let's press Control Enter. And if we see the AIC value, which is 1350. So this is the model that we created based on our manual ordering that we gave looking at the AIC curve uh, differencing and PA, I'm sorry, the ACF curve, the differencing and the PACF curve. So we found out the order of 2, 1, 1 from the previous video and that's uh, from the uh, previous video in the example that we covered and gave the order over here. Now uh, we also took a uh, Otto Arima approach to identify the best model automatically uh, so that uh, we want we do not want to just rely on our understanding uh, based on the three values we identified we also want to wanted to see how the Otto Arima is doing so we produce this model rain arima so if i press control enter on rain arima now based on the aic you can basically choose whether your own model that means the first model is giving you the right value or the better value or the rain arima is giving you the better value so in case of rain model the value is 1350 now let's see how the value is coming from the rain arima model so let's press control enter so in this case the AIC value is 1357 and here in this case it is 1350. So you can see that pretty much both the values are all very sim very uh, near to each other just the 7 points difference. However if we go just by the principle then this particular value or this particular model the RAIN model which we created manually we will going to choose first. And this is happening based on the principle of parsimony, which basically says that lowest uh, lowest will be the parameters, better will be the model is. So in this case, if, if you see that we have uh, two uh, basically term for P, uh, one term for differencing and one, for, one term for Q. As compared to uh, in the ARIMA model, you have two terms for AR, that is Q and that is P and then M for M you have two terms and for differencing you have another term. So basically you have more terms in the ARIMA model. That's why you know the value of AIC is coming more. So the principle of parsimony is coming in this effect and here in case of RAIN model you have less parameters or less co coefficient or the component of the model. You are getting the little bit better value but at the end uh, you may want to evaluate the forecast based on both the models since they are very near to each other there is not significant difference what I would say and then see which model is providing you the best results in this case what I can see both the models are pretty similar to each other and now it is our subject matter expertise as well as the quality of output of the model based on which we need to choose 
So that's about the AIC and how we can evaluate uh, the two different models or five different models based on the uh, various type of ordering that we are providing. And then uh, what uh, next part is, is basically the accuracy. So I have just written some definitions for you, which is for mean error. So based on this function accuracy, if I run, it gives you the ME, RMSC, MAE. So first of all, let's see what these terms are. So ME is basically nothing but the mean error. RMSE is root mean squared error. That what I would uh, in a simple language say is the standard deviation of the error. MAE is mean absolute error. And then you have MPE, which is mean absolute percentage error. MASE is mean absolute scaled error. And ACF1 is autocorrelation of errors at leg one. So these are the ones. So we will see these, these particular value, the ME, RMSE, MAE, MPE, MAPE, and MAEC. So, so our model has derived these values, but sometimes it's little difficult to really understand kind of a daunting task if you are uh, watching it for the very first time and you will be thinking, okay, you have given me so many errors, which one I should really choose. Then it becomes uh, again on the uh, understanding of your subject as well as the method that you choose. The most popular is uh, in, the, in the industry is MAPE mean absolute percentage error as well as RMSE uh, because of their own properties. So I'll not go much deeper into the properties, but uh, once you encounter this, um, these different techniques and read more about it, you will get to know. But MAP is generally what I've seen is mostly used to, to see whether a model is giving how, what is the basically error percentage or the error is uh, from the model. So let's let me go to the Excel and then explain you all of these things. So I have given you a very first of all simple example of actual and predicted values and then what the error is. So first thing is understanding what error is. So error is nothing but the difference between the actual and predicted value. So here in this case the actual value is 800, predicted value let's say is 830 based on the model we have created then the error is minus 30. So Generally, it is in normal language. It is say, uh, we say is it, we say we say it error, and in uh, statistical language we call it residual. So residual is nothing but the error. All right. So what you can think of this is as a sales data, for example, distributed over a period of time, and then you have identified the error. So first thing is M E mean error. So if I go back and show you the M E, M E is mean error. That means the mean of all the errors so we have got all of these errors so for each of the component we have error defined or error identified now we want to see what is our average error because average as you know is one of the important property to describe the entire data set or the entire sample population that, that you're considering so mean error simple formula average of c2 to c7 that means from here to here and what we are saying that it's a negative error of 13.33 all right and after this we have root mean squared error which i said is nothing but the standard deviation of the error so simply the formula that i have put stdev standard deviation c2 to c7 these values and identified 38.42 as a positive value so if i go back here that's what your rmse is coming for your data set then you have mean absolute error. So it's nothing but uh, you first of all find the absolute value of your error. That means if it is negative, the absolute function or the absolute uh, term will convert into a positive. So what you want to do is you want to convert everything into positive and then find a mean of the error. And that's what we have done. So if you see uh, for this cell, we have first done the absolute conversion of values. That means from negative to positive, what we have converted, positive will remain as it is, and then took the average and find found out that 30 is basically what it is coming as mean absolute error. Finally, what uh, then after this, what you have is mean percentage error, MPE. 
So MPE is, uh, this is the first step of MPE where we are identifying the uh, percentage error for each of the term first of all. So div error divided by their actual and then finding the mean percentage error by taking the average of it. So that's how your value here MPE has been derived in this uh, there in the R. After this you have MAPE mean absolute uh, percentage error but let me first correct it because uh, the formula that I have specified is, is not correct. Control X. I would write MASE here and paste the formula over here. Yeah, that's the fun. Basically, what when I was doing it, I was actually putting up this formula for MASE over here, not the MAPE. But again, uh, if you have followed me for mean absolute error and mean percentage error, then MAPE is nothing but the mean absolute percentage error. That means, first of all, you take the absolute value of all of these errors and then take an average. That's that's what it means. So, how we can do that? Well, first of all, take absolute of this, produce this, and then take an average. And that's what your mean absolute percentage error is, which is here in this case, 6.81. So that's that's the MAPE and the comment that you are able to see is basically for the MASE for this particular value which is a little complex because it takes uh, you know few other things into consideration. So how we do or uh, figure out the MASE is, is first of all it is called mean absolute scaled error in that case. First of all, we try uh, to do the differencing, the first order differencing of uh, actual series. So here in this case, if you have, if you see that we have taken the first difference of the series to make the scaling as the um, one of the factor. So if I show you this, uh, it's basically two step as it is mentioned here. Get the average of absolute first difference of entire series first difference series is that is one that consists of difference between consecutive values in the original series so that's the first step we are doing over here so that's as per the definition uh, directly from the uh, persons who have created the algorithm so we are following their step first of all the differencing over here and then the next step is the mase is simply the average of absolute error that means first we will find these uh, uh, these differencing and then the absolute error absolute error divided by the value obtained in the step one so the value from step one is nothing more than the more than a scaling factor so scaling factor is basically uh, to nullify uh, when you have a different scales uh, of different values or if you want to evaluate different models which are on different scales uh, it nullifies the uh, scaling error, but that's a little bit of an advanced concept. We are not going in that direction. So what we are trying to uh, do over here is uh, simply based on this data, uh, we have created the scale, uh, this by or finding the first order difference and then trying to identify MESC. So as per the definition, we need to get the absolute values of these, which is this, and then we need to divide uh, the mean absolute error. So we took, I took the average of this of absolute value and then for MASE, I need to divide the mean absolute error with this particular value and then I got the 29% as the uh, value. Now, uh, this all of these values have their own interpretation uh, when you go down there and uh, try to relate it with the uh, with the model that you have created as basically they say how much there is a variance so you have got 4% variance 29% variance um, so root mean squared saying 38.42 and it's it's basically altogether a different uh, definition because it, it is based on the empirical formula which says okay if you are having one standard deviation then 38.42 that means the 68 percent coverage is there 
if you are at uh, uh, 95 uh, if you want to cover 95 percent degree confidence then it will become somewhere around 78 because you are following two standard deviation so again it requires little bit of your little in-depth knowledge of uh, how you need to interpret this so i really recommend that you little bit read about uh, two things what i would suggest one is the mepe and second one is this one uh, rmse so because these are the ones which in my view will going to affect a lot uh, and help you doing the interpretation of your uh, model in a right way once you are done with this mase is becoming more and more popular uh, because of uh, it it helps uh, nullifying the scaling criteria or the uh, you know the basic scaling criteria that one model follows one scale another model follow another scale then how you can nullify that piece and then evaluate multiple models based on the mase error so do read about uh, mase a little bit more i have just shown you the calculation and giving the basic definition with this but you can find more about it so go ahead and uh, and try to get these definition a little bit more in depth i've just given you high level idea and the calculation and uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have any more question you can write in the comments but uh, i think that's pretty much all i have for you in this video to explain all of these terms all right so i will meet you in the new video with a new topic where i am planning to cover all of these things uh, which we have covered in R with the help of Python. So we will see what how we can do this entire time series analysis with the Python code so that uh, you are not able not only you know uh, using the R for doing the time series but also using the Python if you are a Python user then how you can do this entire piece in the Python. So that's that's all and thanks for watching this video.